Hey, what's up everybody? It's Coach Mike with Elite Performance. Welcome to my channel. Um, first, before I start, just let me apologize for um, not posting as frequently as I used to. I got a lot of things going on, you know, business over here, over here, over here, over here. And I just got to do a better job of managing my time to make sure that my channel doesn't continue, continue to be what's neglected. So, I apologize for not posting this often. I'm going to try to do a better job. Um, I'm actually going to be posting another video this weekend for sure. So, um, with that being said, let me get into what I want to talk to you guys about today. Now, in every other video, and in every video after this, I always tell you that I'm science. I'm going to give you science. I'm going to give you science. I'm going to give you data. I'm going to give you research. Well, I'm going to veer away from that today. And the reason I'm going to veer away from it is because I have these conversations with people on a daily basis. And what I've discovered is that it's very popular for people to say they did their research. But the fact of the matter is, most people don't know how to do research. I mean, and that's no knock on anyone. It's just that I had to take three classes in, in, in college and not prereqs. Like these classes I had to have to graduate in order to learn how to do research and how to read research and how to validate research. And it's not as easy as you went on the internet and read some stuff because just because something is published doesn't make it valid. And I'm gonna come back to that at the end of this video. But for that reason, I'm gonna stray away from science and I'm gonna give you nothing but history, all right? I'm gonna leave links in the description to the history that I'm talking about, so you can, I'm just making it real easy for you to find historically what I'm gonna tell you happened. And at the end of the video, I'll tell you what the links are. If I tell it to you now, you might not really get what I'm saying, but at the end of the video, you'll understand. So I'm gonna leave, I'm gonna leave proof as to what I'm saying. I'm just not gonna to talk to you from science. I'm just gonna use flat out history. And I'm not gonna judge the history. I'm gonna let you be the judge of the history. All right, so, our story is going to start in 1901 in Germany. The German Navy commissioned, I guess that's the word to use, uh, yeah, commissioned a German chemist by the name of Wilhelm Norm. Wilhelm is his first name, W-I-L-H-E-L-M, Norm, N-O-R-M, I think it's N. M -M or something like that, but Wilhelm Norm. They commissioned him to make a lubricant that they could use in diesel engines that they were going to use in submarines. And he did it. No big deal. He's a chemist. That's pretty easy work for a chemist. So he made this lubricant for diesel engines. The problem was the Germans only had about 100 submarines. So it wasn't very profitable to Mr. Norm. So he sold his patent to a British soap company who was going to sell it as soap. Let me say that again. He sold his patent to a British soap company who were going to use a lubricant made for diesel engines as soap. They didn't do a very good job of selling it. That's because most people back then, at this point, we're up to about 1914, 15, they were making their own soap. So they couldn't sell this soap. So what they did was they sold it to Procter & Gamble, who said, you know, we'll do a better job of selling soap. All right, so Procter & Gamble is still trying to sell this stuff as soap. And they couldn't do it either. So, well, they couldn't do it because back then, people were making their own soap. All right, everybody was making their own soap. Um, let me pause for a second, guys, because this noise is kind of getting to me. Let me close this window. Give me one second. All right, I don't think that really helped that much, but anyway. <laughs> Procter & Gamble was going to try to sell this lubricant as soap as well. And they weren't having success with it because, again, everybody back then was making their own soap. And at this point, we're up until about the 1930s, early 1930s. And so they said, well, okay, submarines, it's just not a big market. Soap is a big market, but everybody's making their own soap. What can we use this for? And it's like, ah, we'll sell it as food. All right, food is a big market. Now, 
The product is Crisco. The white stuff that comes in the can, that's what Wilhelm Norm made. That's the lubricant for diesel engines that they tried to sell as soap twice. And now Procter & Gamble says we're going to sell it as cooking oil. Now, here was the problem. At that time, people had been cooking with butter, lard, and cream. And they've been doing that for thousands of years. So before you can sell them Crisco and tell them that it's a healthy alternative to butter, lard, and cream, you have to make butter, lard, and cream seem like it's bad for you. So Procter & Gamble partnered with the American Heart Association. And they began a slander campaign to say that butter, lard, and cream all cause elevated blood cholesterol and all cause heart disease and osteosclerosis and all of these cardiovascular issues. So basically, animal products made you sick. Now, in return for the American Heart Association's um, campaign, Procter & Gamble paid them $1.7 million. Right? So the whole theory of butter, lard, and cream being bad for you and Crisco at that time being good was purchased for $1.7 million. Now, there was a scientist, a physiologist, who sat on the board of both the American Heart Association and Procter & Gamble. He brokered the deal. Without this guy, the deal is not made. Now, this physiologist, uh, his name was Ansel Keys, A-N-C-E-L-K-E-Y-S. And he brokered that deal. All right, so the history is going to pause there somewhere in the mid-1930s. And I'm going to pick it up in the mid-1940s with the scientists who study what people call the Mediterranean diet. All right. Now, this guy was from Oxford University, and he had a theory that elevated blood cholesterol had to do with animal products. And there's nothing wrong with a scientist ha having a theory. That's scientists. That's science. We all have theories. You just have to prove them. Um, so he had this theory. And he, he, the reason he thought it is because rich men who ate a lot of animal products were showing up with, you know, high cholesterol and heart disease, where poor people who ate more, but he calls it vegetarian diet, but really it was, it was pescatarian, because when you listen to him explain it, he's going to say he ate a lot of fish. So a pescatarian diet full of a lot of grains and olive oil, they didn't have um, elevated cholesterol and heart disease. So now, let me pause for a second. That's one datum point. All right. In order to prove a theory, it's going to take hundreds, maybe thousands of datum points. And that is your date up. He, he had one. That's it. So what he did was he went to Naples and he went to a party hosted by rich people. And he looked at what they ate. And then he went to a party hosted by poor people. And he looked at what they ate. And it kind of validated his theory. So he said, OK. I'm going to buy some land in Naples and I'm going to come back here and I'm going to keep looking at what people eat and keep doing blood tests to further my theory. And that's what he did. He looked at what you ate and then checked to see if you had high cholesterol. That's it. Like I said, one date on point. Based off of this information, he and his wife wrote a book. And this book is the beginning of the ideology that the Mediterranean diet is healthy. The book was translated immediately into like a bunch of different languages and it was extremely popular. OK, so fast forward into the early 1950s, late 1940s. After World War Two, um, he now is going to do a study to validate his book. So he wrote the book years before. Now he's going to do a study to validate his book. All right. Now, the study is called the Eight Country Study. Right? This is the study on the Mediterranean diet. Um, it should have been called the 13 Country Study, but I'm going to come back to that. It's called the Eight Country Study. And what he did was he went to eight countries in the Mediterranean. And understand, the Mediterranean is big. All right? It goes from you know, not just Greece, it's Turkey, it's Northern Africa, it's part of the Middle East. Like The Mediterranean is a huge area. So he went to eight countries. In all eight countries, he found data that validated his theory. 
animal-based diets produce high cholesterol and osteosclerosis and heart disease and all these things. And pretty much pescatarian with a lot of grains and olive oil didn't produce those results. Those people were virtually healthy. Now, the reason I said it should have been called the 13 country study is because that's how many countries he went to. He went to 13. He didn't go to 8. Wherever the data did not back up his theory, he just left them out to study. For instance, he went to France, Denmark, and I think it was Finland or, or, or Switzerland. And there he found people eating tons of animal fat. Tons. No high cholesterol, no osteosclerosis, no heart disease, no nothing perfectly healthy. He left them out to study. He went to places like Japan where the data backed up what he said. He put them in a study. He went to places like Sardinia, a little island off the coast of Italy, and he found what backed up his research, so he put them in a study. Now, during that time when he did that study, in the middle of that island, Sardinia, was an indigenous people. And these people actually lived four to five years longer than everybody else in the Mediterranean. And the major differences between their diets and everybody else was one, olive oil. They didn't use it. They hated it. They used butter. They used lard. They ate a diet predominantly of lamb, a couple of fruits, and a lot of nuts. All right? They lived longer than everybody. And they ate meat and used animal fat. He left them out to study. Again, he goes to a country like Chile, where he found people at that time eating in a way that would make his theory right. But they had high cholesterol, high cholesterol. And, you know, osteosclerosis and you know, heart disease and all these things. He left them out to study. All right, so the Mediterranean diet basically was put together from that study where a lot of research was left out, okay? That's the history part of it. Like I said, I'm not gonna judge it. I'm gonna leave links in the description to, um, well, let me tell you the, the, the scientist's name because I forgot that part and that's, that's very important. The scientist who did the Mediterranean diet study, his name is Ansel Keys. The same guy who sat on the board of the American Heart Association and who sat on the board of Procter & Gamble that brokered the deal to get everybody to eat Crisco. It's the same guy. All right. I'm going to leave a link in the description to Ansel Keys, an interview with him. So you can hear it come out of his mouth. How he had a theory. He did no research. He had a theory. How he went to a party and watched people eat. Then he moved to the area and watched people eat. Then wrote a book. Like, I'm going to put that link in the description. You can hear it come straight out of his mouth. Now, I'm also going to put a link in the description to uh, an article from the Wall Street Journal 2014. I think it was May or June. Um, eight page article, I, I believe it was, talking about Ansel Keys and how he lied and how everything was a fraud and everything. Uh, I'm going to leave both of those in the description. But the point that I want to make, guys, is this. I hear all the time, I did my research, I did my research, I did my research. Here's the thing, just because something is published doesn't make it valid, okay? You can find a billion studies to say something and all, every last one of them could be invalid. If there was no such thing as invalid research being published, then you'd never see this commercial. All right, it, here's the commercial. It, it, it wouldn't exist. Have you or a loved one suffered X, Y, Z because you took this pill? If so, call this number. That pill had to be researched before the FDA allowed it to be put on the market. That research had to validate the pharmaceutical company's claim that one, the pill was safe, and two, it did what it was supposed to do. Bad research, right? There's bad research all day, every day, all right? And if you don't know how to validate the research or read the research, differentiate between what you're reading is good or bad, then you can be led to think 
anything. You know, anything. Guys, listen. There are a lot of nutrition tips and ways of eating and diets and people, you know, talking about them and all that. God, I don't have an agenda. All right. I'm a holistic nutritionist. I want to be healthy. I don't have an agenda to one diet or one way or this way or that way. I go with the way that not only science, true science, has proven that it worked, but also the way that indigenous people who live hundreds, you know, not hundreds, but well into the hundreds, all over earth, they're doing that. How do they eat? This is what I do. All right. I have not been sick since 1992. Not a cough, not a sneeze. You know, I had allergies, but I even remedied that. I haven't been sick since 1992. All right. I don't take medication. I've never taken a pharmaceutical drug in my life. There's no aspirin in my house. There's no Tylenol. There's no uh, uh, Robitussin. I don't know. Whatever. It, it, it doesn't exist in my world. I have a son who will be three in a couple weeks. He's never been sick. Never been vaccinated. I have a son who's nine months old today. Never been sick. Never been vaccinated. Girlfriend I've been with for five years. Since she's been with me, never been sick. All right. What I'm telling you works. I'm the proof that it works. Right? I don't meal prep. I don't do this. I don't do that. There are things I do, but I don't do the stuff that you hear people talking about all, all, all the time. My lifestyle works. If anybody else can make those claims that I just made, please comment in the description. If you haven't been sick since 1992 and you don't take any pharmaceutical drugs from 1992 until now, Never, not one day ever. If you do not take medication ever, I don't remember the last time I took aspirin. It was in the 90s at some point, all right? I don't take flu shots. I've never in my life had a flu shot and I've never had the flu. My children have not been vaccinated and none of them are sick, ever. My sons have never had trips to the doctor unless it was just their checkup. If you can say all that and your diet and your lifestyle is different than mine, Kudos. I'll even tell people what you said your diet and lifestyle is. If you can't, then I'm just saying, like, I don't have an agenda. I don't want you to be this or want you to be that. I want you to be healthy. That's it. I want you to be healthy. I want you to be healthy. I want you to be happy. And that's the reason why I put this content out here. Um, like I said, guys, in the description, I'm leaving the video of Ansel Keys himself telling you how he did the research. And I'm going to leave the link to the article from 2014 in the Wall Street Journal. Now, understand this. It's the essence of animal-based diet is bad for you. Is a lie? Then what's the rest of it? You know, don't, don't do research. Look at the history and just use a little bit of common sense. Just a little. Um, I'm going to be posting another video this week. I think I said that already, but I'm just saying that again. I'm going to be posting another one. So be on the lookout for that. And like I said, I'm going to try to post more frequently. But until next time, guys, I'm Coach Mike with Elite Performance. And, you know, have a great day.